This is what your favorite creepy kids movie says about you. You definitely believe humanity is doomed and AI is going to take over the world and you're coping by tinkering around with this and that and doing little tasks with your hands. Sometimes you put amazing stuff together and you don't even know how you did it. You'll be very appreciated in the apocalyptic wasteland. You were left alone in front of the TV a lot as a kid and you had to make a lot of your own fun with what you had, so now you're more than self-sufficient and you make the fun times happen for the people you care about so they don't have to figure it out on their own like you did. That or you're Canadian. This came from Canada and I feel like it explains a lot of things. When the leaves turn colors, you reach 100% of your power. All the handmade scarves and scented candles within a mile radius are floating inches off the ground as your strength returns to you and your power to finally accessorize the way you want is an Avengers level threat. You're learning to love the things about you that make you different and that's amazing because you're finally extending the same courtesy and understanding that you give to others to yourself, which is a recipe for good self-esteem. No notes for you. Keep up the good work, kiddo. You are so cheesy, but in a fun way. You enjoy slapstick humor and puns. It's giving excited dad energy and I am here for it. You're the kind of person who keeps telling everyone that one crazy story you've told a thousand times because it really does get funnier every time. I'm just going to preemptively compliment you on your Halloween costume now because it will be phenomenal this year like it is every year. Oh, you have that fun kind of brain rot, the one you can only get from stuff written by people who don't understand how computers work, and maybe one day you'll get to live in a virtual world, but today is not that day. Really? The one with Shaggy in the red shirt and Scrappy-Doo? Honey. Do you remember going to the book fair as a kid? Here's what your favorite series says about you. You have a profound understanding of the dark impulses hidden deep within the consciousness of both man and beast, and asking you about animal facts is the conversation equivalent of opening Pandora's box. You grew up to be intelligent but extremely cynical. You keep moving forward, and you're tenacious even when things seem absolutely hopeless. You also have a good vocabulary. You can say how shitty your day was in about a thousand different ways. Kids who read Captain Underpants grew up to commit crimes. You are shameless and have zero respect for authority. You're the embodiment of chaos. There's also a really good chance you tried that thing where you put ketchup packets under someone's toilet seat as a prank? If you know, you know. Y'all are classy. This was good light reading, and Night of the Living Dummy especially was a work of art. You probably love a good thunderstorm on a spooky night now and then, but the majority of your life feels like it's probably pretty well adjusted. You, on the other hand, are a little shaky, like a chihuahua. This went way too hard for a kid's book, and it either turned you into a full-on horror junkie or just gave you anxiety. If some leaves rustle outside, you're already locking every door, bolting the windows shut, and hiding under a blanket. This was your gateway into things like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, and The Ren Fair. You're a fantasy nerd, and no one can take that away from you, even if they steal your pointy prosthetic ears or your bag of dice while you're not looking. I'm sensing some entitlement. I'm just kidding, of course, but this really did feel like an unintentional training manual for little Karens. Where do I even start with this one? It's you. You're the problem what your favorite Studio Ghibli movie says about you. You are terrified of confrontation and you escape into childhood fantasies to avoid dealing with your problems. You keep telling yourself everything is fine, but the world is clearly on fire, and while you're devoted to helping in any way you can, you wonder how you're supposed to do that when it's a struggle just to fall out of bed and crawl to the shower most mornings. You're a natural leader and an environmentalist. You don't like the people in power, and you would be secretly planning a revolution if there were just a few more hours in the day, but since you're so busy, you'll settle for leaving a few nasty comments here and there to let the oppressors know you mean business. You've drawn a little circle in your house somewhere and it's your designated comfort zone and if someone tries to drag you out to do a new thing you start immediately planning an escape route you have great critical thinking and problem solving skills and you love little puzzles and crafts like pottery or crochet yarn girlies love this shit you're emotional and you thrive on drama you crave attention while somehow being introverted and it's confusing you're brutally honest to a degree that would scare a therapist and you're insufferable to play board games with because you always have to win oh honey you're always attracted to the wrong kind of people and hey welcome to the club you'll think they're just misunderstood they're so funny and smart and i just need them to like me. No, you don't. You're better than that. You deserve better. Loving yourself is severely underrated. You're capable, charming, and smart, but maybe just not in the right environment for you. It feels like if you were just somewhere else in the world with different people, you could really hit your stride. You're always up late, having dinner after everyone is asleep, and listening to lo-fi music while it rains. You're also a little vengeful, but honestly, bitches have it coming. You just want to feel something again. You feel too much, and you would like to go back to not feeling. Go read the book. Do you remember these spooky kids' movies? Here's what your favorite says about you. You owned at least one item of clothing with this on it. You're very familiar with black nail polish and hair dye, and in some extreme cases of fandom, we even see tattoos. High school was a very emotional time for you, and now you do art. Also, your type is tall, pale, and lanky. People are always pushing you around, and nobody ever expects you to stick up for yourself, and they're correct, you never do. But you could. You just have to win a few more hypothetical shower arguments, and you'll have the confidence to say what you really feel. 
Go get him, champ. You have a lot of secrets rattling around in that little brain of yours. You're resourceful, a survivor. You probably go to therapy, or you just have a lot of emotional intelligence. But spending too much time with you causes people to learn absolutely horrifying things they wish they never knew. So you keep that little doorway into your mind shut for fear of what might come crawling out. You will fight anyone, anywhere, any hour of the day for any reason, and you'll probably win because you are on Waffle House time. This was the type of movie you got from a DVD bin at the supermarket, and the whole plot is just some kids planning large-scale property destruction. It resonates with the unsupervised street urchin inside us all. We have to come together as a society to move past the works of Roald Dahl. No more chocolate factories, no more giant peaches, anything related to giant food and small children. We can just get that out of here right now. It's mildly problematic, and the kids who loved it keep growing up to be weird. It's me. I was kids who loved it. Grandpa, who taught you how to work the internet? You do a terrible southern accent, you love spicy food, you definitely believe in astrology, and you might be a furry. Either that or you're just really into U.S. history. Also, It's Terror Time Again is an absolute banger. You just like the Hex Girls. Seriously, that's all anyone remembers. You're either a goth girl looking for a gamer boy or a gamer boy looking for a goth girl. So just get out of here and find true love. Go on, get! Do you have a favorite cartoon when you were a kid? Here's what it says about you. Billy and Mandy kids have gremlin energy. Y'all would walk into a crowded theater and yell fire just to see what happens. Then you would trip your friend while the cops tried to catch you. It's downright maniacal. You have trouble with commitment because you've been burned before. Whether it was an ex-flame, a job that didn't pan out, or your favorite show changing its animation style halfway through, you have trust issues now. You're kind of weird, but also a great and loyal friend. The first thing people notice about you is how utterly strange you are, and the second thing is that you're a very intelligent and insightful person. It's a shame only like 1 out of 12 people actually survive. I mean, stick around long enough to get to know you. Harold and the Purple Crayon Kids became Chalk Zone Kids, and Chalk Zone Kids became the working artists that do all the sus commissions you people search for after I remind you of your cartoon crushes. Rudy's got the chalk, and he's using it for evil. You're the type of person who will eat what's put on their plate and not complain. You're just happy that you have a roof over your head. You can want more, though. It's an option. Nobody's going to get mad at you for wanting more out of life. And if they do get mad at you, they are exactly the person who's been holding you back. You're the type of person to say something like, I love you, I don't like you, but I love you, and really only be half kidding. You tolerate a lot of wild shenanigans from the people in your life because you have strong family values and the world feels too small to burn all your bridges. Yet. The theme song is now stuck in your head. Good luck with that. I feel like you came into work today completely zonked out on the devil's lettuce. This is from your manager. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Here's what it says about you. You have a cool retro vibe. You're probably single-handedly bringing back the mullet. You're a walking neon sign, a box of old cassette tapes, an old Cadillac made of solid steel that gets horrible mileage and handles like a boat. People who like The Shining have the same energy as college students who are really into theory. They'll make a six-point argument to explain why they like the stuff they like, and when you poke a hole in their logic, they get defensive and talk shit about your mom. If you picked up a Ouija board right now, I think it would spell out LGBTQIA. I think this one is for the girls and the gays, and if someone suggests a movie marathon of this franchise, I know I am in a safe space, and probably about to join a witch's coven. You probably like puns and dad jokes, and when something crazy happens, you have a catchphrase like, whoa, Nelly, or I'll have what she's having. You give off cool art teacher energy, and you keep telling everyone that the kids think you're hip. They don't. You're either a connoisseur of vintage movies, or you just say a popular answer when people ask about what your favorite stuff is. Your favorite food is McDonald's fries. Your favorite music is whatever's on the radio. Maybe you just like culturally pervasive stuff, or maybe you're just trying to fit in. You're alternative, a little wacky, a little offbeat. You collect weird stuff, and you have a lot of tattoos, and you like metal. You want a muscle car, and you're always trying to sell some of the junk you have that's sitting in your garage. You hear a lot of aspiring writers and directors talking about the cultural impact of this movie and how it was a tipping point in meta storytelling. If this is your favorite, I'm gonna guess you're an artist and you want to do creative work for a living and you have a lot of really good ideas, but you just need the money to make them happen, man! You're hilarious and you have great taste. You are traumatized and have great taste. You are traumatized and have bad taste. Don't you think you're getting too old to be edgy? As someone who also loves this movie, do you watch these old-ass TV shows? Here's what your favorite classic programs say about you. Your aesthetic is spooky, bitch. And your real family is terrible. So you like watching this one instead. When you see Morticia and Gomez, you always think relationship goals. And Wednesday Adams girlies collect bones and love true crime podcasts. All of the appliances in your house are ancient, but you just can't bring yourself to get rid of them. So what if that stand mixer is 100 years old and has no electrical grounding? It was your grandma's. Plus it looks cool and futuristic. And it can bend a fork clean in half. 
You're politically very progressive, but with your fashion sense, you could have been a background character in Oppenheimer. You have an irrational phobia, like a fear of flying or of the open ocean, and life likes to throw cruel, ironic twists at you. In fact, you've probably had three thrown at you before lunch. You're out here grinding every day to put those dino nuggets on the table for the family. You have the charisma of Barney Rubble, but you're working Fred Flintstone hours. You know what they say, though. It's a living. You watch this show with your parents or grandparents, and the theme song will never leave your head. That whistling tune will be the last thing you hear before passing into the great beyond. Star Trek people were made fun of for their niche science fiction interests, but now all the popular shows have a sci-fi angle. And yet somehow you still get made fun of for liking the original series, and it's next generation fans who are making fun of you. You've been betrayed by your own fandom. If you watch this before season 9, you are loyal to a frightening degree. You probably binge so much old campy content it's practically a career at this point, and I would love to hear some interesting Doctor Who facts in the comments below. Now you listen here, Buster. We don't use that kind of language in this home. Did you watch Toonami as a kid? Here's what your favorite shows say about you. Y'all simply never grew up. You're still practicing your energy blasts in the shower and doing the fusion dance with your friends, but haven't set up the auto pay on your electric bill. But honestly, who can blame you? It's way too expensive. You were angsty. You probably had a notebook full of weird drawings, a pair of boots, a lot of black clothes. It was a whole aesthetic. But now that you're grown, you can dye your hair anytime and get all the tattoos you want, and that is the real victory here. People might think you're a bit of a creep, but it's not your fault. This show tricked you into believing demonology was cool and being a jerk meant you were smart, which are the greatest lies in all of anime. Every character in this show was so cool that it somehow spread to you and made you cool. Congratulations, you got your hand-me-down Riz from Anime Batman. People might sometimes catch you doing a thousand-yard stare into the middle distance, and you can't explain to them what's going through your head, so you just say, I'm fine. Well, you're not a Gundam fan. This wasn't for Gundam fans, and I really don't know who it was for. If this was your favorite, it's because you haven't watched it in forever, and I've strongly advised against it. This show will rip the rose-colored glasses right off your face and throw them out the window. You like super niche music, and you do hilarious impressions. Also, let me know who you had a crush on. Was it Hiei, Karama, or the announcer girl from the Dark Tournament arc? The cat one, not the fish. You just want cool android powers. Super speed is legit, but we both know you would use it for evil, so you get bops. Do you have a favorite cartoon as a kid? Here's what it says about you. Justice League fans are the type of people to sit there researching the answers to the greatest scientific questions of all time, and yet their laundry is still just sitting there, unfolded, and it's been a few days. You've never been a fan of people. That's why you have a thousand imaginary animal friends. They never cancel plans with you. They never dump you with a text message or make fun of your haircut. They're just there for you, and they're more real than most of the people you know. You like to sit around making out-of-pocket comments and doing the bare minimum, and I have never been more proud. Billionaires, aliens, Russia, it doesn't matter if the whole world is about to hit the season finale, you are right there, doing what you normally do, which is not a lot. This scares me. You scare me. Half of the internet is just wild, out-of-context clips of this. Go fix your life. Oh, you were that kid that was sprinting around the house and breaking every valuable thing your parents owned. I have no idea where you are now, though. Maybe the military? Let me know in the comments. STEM kids watched Phineas and Ferb, and a lot of them are engineers now. I will not be taking questions at this time. Oh, you want to be best friends? Is that it? You want to be roommates? You want to move in together and get a Subaru right now? Well, it's too late. I'm already booking a U-Haul. Does this even count as a cartoon? I don't know, but I'm gonna bop you anyway. Do you have a favorite animated comfort show? Here's what it says about you. You are very intelligent. You're one of those former gifted kids, and you could be out there saving the world, but instead you're hidden away in your lair, going down science article rabbit holes like you're mining for serotonin. You are low maintenance, and it does not take a lot to make you happy, and sometimes it seems like life doesn't even want you to have those little things. You don't ask for a lot, and you deserve so much more, and I see you. This just screams loyalty to me. I bet you order food from the same restaurant every time you get dinner. You go to the same gas station every day, and you've been hanging out with the same person since kindergarten. Garden. You would rather go to jail than snitch, and that is why everyone needs Simpsons people in their life. Y'all are just wild and don't care about anything. This is chaotic neutral territory. If someone asks you about your favorite cartoon and you say Family Guy, it could very reasonably be grounds for a restraining order. Not necessarily, but very reasonably could be. Your view of the world is just a little cynical, and you like to poke fun at things that everybody loves. You're not wrong, just to be clear. It's hilarious. I mean, look at what I'm doing right now. But you might poke fun at stuff before you even get a chance to enjoy it, and that would be a shame. If you're like me, you enjoy this because you have an aversion to change, and a low threshold for sensory input. This show is like a burger. It's warm. It's simple. It's comforting. It's extremely consistent, and most people like it. No, I'm not touching this fandom with a 10-foot pole. I'm sorry. I do not want y'all jumping on me. I'm not the counter at McDonald's. Ugh, what's the point? 
you watched cartoons in the 2000s? Here's what more of your favorites say about you. Your vibe is constantly shifting to adapt to the soul-crushing environment you found yourself in. You become whatever the situation calls for, and it is a full-on survival mechanism. You are very fun and lighthearted, but you have a lot of sadness inside you that sits just underneath the surface. It doesn't take much to crack that emotional shell and get your trauma dumping. Also, I'm just going to start a tally for all the shows with goth crushes. Your alignment is chaotic neutral, and you play with people's emotions so much your nickname should be the Gaslighter. Also, you love escapism in the forms of video games and anime, and sometimes anime about video games. Middle school was an especially rough time in your life. And of course, speaking of anime-inspired, this show is elite, and you have good taste. No call-out for you. Enjoy your day-to-day. You have a strong moral compass and a lot of empathy for people who are in tough situations. Even if you're not the oldest sibling, you radiate big sibling energy. You say things like, I don't like the drama, while actively being the source of the drama. You use gel pens to write very pretty, passive-aggressive notes, and I am terrified of you. You're already writing an angry comment as I say these words. You are emotionally distant because you're petrified people will judge you if you show them the real you. But more importantly, you honestly think I would have a goth crush counter and forget her? You hear the government confirmed that aliens are real? Here's how long you'd survive an invasion based on your favorite movies. You are full of optimism and far too trusting. You're getting on that mothership willingly, and that's why you're the first to go. You realized a long time ago that not all problems can be solved with brute force. Sometimes you also need duct tape and fire. You're on the front line of this invasion, and you'll be the second to go. You don't solve problems, you are the problem, and you aren't going down easy. You know when to bide your time and prepare for what's coming. You're the third to go. You have some serious trust issues, and that's okay. Nobody here is a monster trying to get you. Just relax and boo! See? Those quick reflexes? That's why you make it to round four. You were a theater kid, and if we need someone with perfect pitch to defend the planet, we will call you. The aliens will actively avoid you, so they don't have to see your audition tapes. And that's why you make it to round number five. You are going to try a bunch of very questionable things with the aliens. A willing participant in a number of experiments. But you're biting off more than you can chew. You might be number six, but you're going out with a creepy smile on your face. You're smart. You aren't fighting. You're running in the opposite direction as far as humanly possible to wait it out. You almost make it too, but not quite. You still have the best generalized strategy and will be seventh to go. You spend entirely too much time at work if this is what you think of as aliens, and you don't care if you get vaporized. At least you don't have to go into work tomorrow, right? But whether your company is run by humans or new intergalactic overlords, you're still just too valuable to let go. And that's why you survived the alien invasion. Congratulations, and report to HR for sensitivity training. Do you like Lord of the Rings? Here's what your favorite character says about you. You are beyond tired of carrying the whole crew on your back every time there's a crisis. You're sensitive and pure of heart, and we need that moral compass you provide, but you do cry a lot. And that's okay, but it's a lot. You are a cozy, self-sufficient introvert who has their life together. And if people would stop bugging you, that would be great. You don't bother explaining anything. To anyone and you love to mess with everyone you are well beyond caring what other people think at this point boy bands are getting popular again and you are here for it you showed up for the dummy mommy energy and you're not leaving unless you're told to you are actively looking for a sugar daddy if you can't make it to the party your friends will adjust the time and day because you are that much fun to be around you're really annoying at parties because you do this impression <laughs> oh you're serious you're a little bit basic, but your heart's in the right place. And anyway, what does basic mean except universally well-liked? Buckle up. People expect you to be the comic relief, so anytime you show your deeper side, everyone is extremely concerned at how serious the situation at hand is. You respect the hustle. Nobody was working on their evil plans as hard as this guy. Except this guy. You like the cool armor and the power. I mean, he could beat anyone else on this list. Until now. Let's have a moment of silence for Sauron, gone too soon. You are a kind soul, and you want to help Tree Grandpa be less angry about his wife leaving him. Get out of here, you creepy little shit. On this episode of Stupid Expensive LA Homes, empty nesters Becky and Frank tour a spacious 300-square-foot home with a thermostat that doubles as a doorbell, a breakfast nook that seats four people, as long as those people are very small children, and a backyard filled with hungry coyotes. But when Becky notices the trendy European-style combination kitchen bathroom is actually a bucket bolted to the floor, 
she begins to have second thoughts about making an offer on this $3.4 million Santa Monica dumpster fire. But it seems like Frank has fallen in love with the smart home features that include an automated doggy door that their 230-pound English Mastiff can almost fit its head through and the automatic blinds that work 100% of the time, 50% of the time, and only when connected to Wi-Fi. Will the couple be able to defeat the army of raccoons living under the floorboards? Can Becky compromise on her need for running water in order to be within walking distance of a luxury grocery store that sells $43 smoothies? Will Frank learn to let go of the echoes of his father's voice telling him he's failed as a man because he can't afford the cost of living in one of the most expensive cities in the goddamn world? Find out on this episode of Stupid Expensive L.A. Homes.